In this video, I'm just going to be reacting to some TikTok natural hair videos. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay. That full C hair lifestyle. Well, I don't know if it's full C, but it looks very, you know, textured. I love what our hair does, right? From a shrunken, that really looks like a teeny weeny afro, right? To this massive afro. The change is drastic. It's dramatic. And yeah, this hair is awesome. I like it. Here we go. Everyone keeps making jokes about how bad it would be if I get lice or that the lice are going to be thriving in my head if I were to get lice or they ask questions about what I would do if I did have lice. I know it's a joke for most people, but for the people that are actually wondering, I've never had lice before and it's pretty hard for people with my kind of hair to get lice, I've heard. It's not impossible, but I don't know anybody with my kind of hair that's ever had lice before. The only people I see that did have lice that I've known is people with straight hair, but that's because the bugs like cling on to straight hair easier than coily hair, but just to make sure I looked it up. So we can still get lice but it struggles to grip onto our kind of hair. And it's apparently not very common, according to Google. But if I were to get lice, what I would do is cut it off. I would first try to get them out, I guess. I'd have no problem cutting off my hair because I don't like bugs. The thought of bugs in my head kind of pains me, so I would probably just cut off all my hair. But yeah, I've never had lice before and I don't plan on getting lice, hopefully. <laughs> well, that was funny. First of all, that hair is beautiful. She's got some thick, thick, beautiful, dark, dense hair she's beautiful too um i don't know i don't you guys do you know much about lice like pfft. i know the way we treat lice clinically is pretty much we give you a shampoo where you put it in the hair and they all die pretty much and then you go ahead to comb it the comb that they give you though to remove the lice is actually a fine tooth comb all right so it's actually you pfft. If you get lice, you might need to go in there and actually use a fine tooth comb to detangle your hair. I think if, mm, I don't know, if it was me, I'll probably give my hair a blow dry after the treatment, kill the lice, whatever. Give myself a blow dry and maybe silk press my hair and then I'll go in with the comb. I don't know if that works. <laughs> That may sound silly, but I think that's what I would do. You guys let me know. What would you do? Like, that would... Yeah, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I know it's easy to treat lice in straight... Like, people with straight hair, because, of course, fine tooth comb going through straight hair is much easier than uh, textured hair. However, I actually didn't know that lice finds it a little bit hard to cling on to the kinks. Yay to the kinks. <laughs> Girl, I love me some type for hair. <laughs> there is no hair that does what type for hair does. I promise you. Just look at the transition from like really just curly hair. And then she went on to the Bantu knots. That took me by surprise. And then that blowout was so beautiful. It reminded me of my hair, actually. That's what my hair looks like when it's blow dried. Um, I don't know, I may be biased, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm just like, ah, that is so beautiful. And then the end result, I loved how she did the cornrows. We talk about the, what, the length retention challenge that we're on this year, 2024. And I've told you guys, cornrows are a great way to retain, retain your length. Wear wigs, I'm wearing a wig right now. That size of cornrow is a good size to have because that lasts a little bit longer. And also when it comes to the detangling, right? You don't have a lot of matting in one in one cornrow, if you know what I mean. And also the way she fed the cornrow into the next one, just made it in such a way that the ends are protected as well. Another way is just to 
Conroe, conroe your hair up to like here. Leave the hair out here and just do one big conroe for the back. Tuck the end in. Just some ideas out for you, but that was cool. So I want to talk about the curl typing system and how there's a new one that's way more accurate and that will clear the confusion about what is considered to be 4C hair and what is not. I feel like people need to understand that the current hair typing system that we use doesn't explain the full range of hair textures, especially afro textured hair. So based off of this hair chart, they expect us to find our curl type just by looking at it, which causes a lot of confusion because there's no quantifiable way to measure our hair type. And it's hard to figure out what your hair type is just by looking at this. But there's another hair typing system called the circle hair system, which was created by a black woman named Pamela Farrell. She started to collect hair samples from all over the world and she found that the smallest curl size came from a little boy in South Africa from the sand people. Not to mention the sand people have the oldest DNA found in modern humans. Based on all the different samples that she collected, she categorized each curl size using the point unit system, which is the same system used for fonts. The smallest curl size is the eight point, which is the size of a pin needle. And this is my hair strand, which is really close to that size. But 12 point and 14 point are the most common curl sizes for African Americans and people from West Africa. So the people who say that they have 4C hair are basically saying that they have a curl size that's between 8 point and 14 point. Girl, this issue of hair typing is just taking, I mean, a whole breath of its own. Like, I appreciate this. Okay, let me start there. I appreciate, you know, a more inclusive hair typing system, more detailed hair typing system. I agree. Do you guys remember The Gods Must Be Crazy? If you haven't watched that movie, you need to watch it. But, you know, South African kids, their hair is a very, very, very tightly coiled. My hair is not that. My hair does not do that. Um, and I know that the current Andre Walker most popular hair typing system is not particularly exhaustive of all the characteristics of type for hair or kinky textured hair. However, my question is, now that you know all this about your hair, okay, it's a, what did you say, needle size, then what? What does that do? Please let me know because I may be in the dumb, ignorant or something. What does it do when a hair typing system gives you every single aspect of your hair? Like what? does that do? Do you end up caring for it differently? Do you feel differently about it? Do you feel included? Like what's the, what's the purpose? Um, I honestly do not take hair typing as seriously as most people do. I just use it as a guide. Like it's a guide. It just tells me where I kind of fall in the category out there with the textured kinky haired people done. Like, a, a hair typing system or guide it doesn't really tell you how to look after your hair, how to moisturize your hair, how to seal your hair, how to, I don't know, retain length. Mm, I don't know. You guys let me know. Comment below. Let me know what, how you feel about the current uh, typing system and if it changes anything for you. the day when celebrities will be out here rocking natural hair did you i didn't and when beyonce came out with her sacred um hair care line i was like oh, maybe she's gonna finally come out here with the kinks but it didn't happen i don't know if it's gonna happen i feel like the day that the icons of this world and the celebrities of this world actually start to embrace their hair truly. 
it's going to start to shift things because these people are actually influential. They're the ones that set the trends. A lot of people look up, up to them. A lot of the other races look up to them and listen to them and value their opinion and their take on things. They're influential. Can't deny that. So when you see Viola Davis and Lupita Nyong'o and some of the famous, you know, famous faces in their rocking nature hair, I just have to commend them. They are making a difference that will be felt generations from now. If you're in a community and you're the only one rocking natural hair, do not stop because the difference is going to be made. Like the change is, you might not see the change or the impact right now, but a few years down the line, some generations down the line, hopefully our kids don't have to deal with what we've dealt with because of our hair, right? So it's really beautiful to see these women rocking their natural hair. I love it. Do you? Anyway, guys, I'm trying to make these TikTok reactions not too long. So I'm hoping this video is 10 minutes or less. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be out with another one. I'm not done. I still have some videos to review. Comment below. Let me know what you think about these topics in this particular video. Until next time, it's Koli Bye.